This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This video goes through and looks at the accounting treatment for payments that are made by the lessee and looking at how that payment might not just be for the direct use of the asset, so therefore the lease payment, but there might also be a payment attached to it that is related to an actual service provided on the asset. So examples that you'd be thinking of would be maybe you are the lessee and you are leasing a building from the lessor. You make a monthly or an annual payment, but as part of that payment, you are paying for the building maintenance service. So part payment is for the use of the building, but part of the payment is for the service. Now, of that entire payment, how much relates to the use of the building? Because that's the lease, you know, the the control of the asset whereby we get the economic benefits from it and how much is for the service because the service is not related to the use of an asset is it okay uh, so we'll need to split out the total payment between that that is attributable to the lease and that which is not attributable to the lease uh, other examples as well i suppose taking it away from buildings could be that you make a lease payment for the use of plant and machinery Okay, you make one big payment and part of that payment is for the use of the asset. The other part of the payment is there for maybe the maintenance or the repairs of that plant and machinery. So we'll need to take the total payment and split it out in two. Uh, how do we go through and split the payment? Well, what we're going to do there is we're going to base it very similar to what we saw on IFRS 15 and revenue. So you can see consistency appearing between the standards which is great which is what we want isn't it uh, it's all based upon is it the standalone prices so you take the standalone price of the lease component you take the standalone price of the non-lease component add them together and work out the total standalone prices and then allocate it based on that proportion. Okay, what's the lease proportion? What is the non-lease proportion of the total? Okay, so it says that explain how the annual rental should be split between the lease and non-lease component. Okay, so it says there per enters into a contract for the use of an item of machinery and its annual maintenance. So the machinery. Is the lease isn't it uh, the annual maintenance is the non-lease component uh, for a combined total of a hundred thousand dollars per annum payable at the end of the lease period so there's a hundred thousand dollars in arrears isn't there we need to be able to split that one hundred thousand into the lease and non-lease component so we base it upon what yeah, the standalone prices, don't we? Okay, that we saw the above. Okay, so it says the rental of the machinery without any maintenance is $95,000 per annum. So if I entered into a lease with no maintenance attached to it, it would be $95,000. Uh, if I already leased the building from somebody else and then thought, right, I need some maintenance, uh, sorry, leased the machinery from somebody else, and if I needed some maintenance, then it would cost me $10,000 per annum to pay the service provider. Okay. So what we've got there is that the total is it 95000 and 10000 So is that 105000 So what gets allocated to the lease component is 95 out of 105 of the 100,000 total payment. The non-lease component based upon the standalone prices, the standalone price of the maintenance contract is 10. That's 10 out of the 105, so that's the proportion. I think it works out as it 9.5%, 9.52% if you use the answer at the back. And we apply that, is it 
the 100,000. Okay, if you tap that away on your calculator, uh, I think you get is it the least component is 90476, and then the non least component there is 9524. Okay, so the least component of 90476 would form part of the payments of the lease which we'll look at the accounting for under IFRS 60 in a moment uh, so in the next videos and then the non-lease component of 9524 that will just be recognized on an accruals basis within the statement of profit or loss wouldn't it so in the first year there would be 9524 credit the bank and debit your expense with 9524 okay there we go that's it it's nothing hugely technical i think you should be reasonably comfortable with it given what you've seen in ifrs 15 previously uh, but again do just be aware as ifrs 16 is one of those newer accounting standards the examiner likes to test these little bits and pieces so, so i'm just having awareness of it okay other than that i'll see you in the next video where we start to look at ifrs 16 and the actual accounting for the lease within the lessees book so showing how to recognize that right of use asset and the lease liability so see you all shortly